Well, joining us now for some analysis is our political correspondent, Simon Young. Good morning to you, Simon. Uh, Dresden has the honor of hosting the reunification uh, celebrations in Germany this year. It seems a bit of an odd choice there. It just uh, it seems a bit odd. I mean, given the, the city's hostility, at least uh, in some of those protests towards foreigners, the, the socially divisive atmosphere in Dresden just doesn't seem to work with the idea of reunification. Well, Terry, it's just a, it's a bureaucratic coincidence, really, that it uh, falls this year to Dresden to host these events. Uh, it's on a, on a rotation, so each year the central national celebrations are held in a different uh, state. And because this year uh, Stanislav Tillich, the state premier of Saxony, is uh, the president of the upper chamber of parliament, the Bundesrat, that means that his capital city is, is the venue for this this year. OK, so it's purely, uh, purely by chance that it's happening in Dresden this year. Now, Unification Day comes every year. It's been coming around now for 26 years. Uh, it, during this time, people typically look at the differences that remain between East and West Germany, or what used to be East and West Germany. One statistic that stands out this year is indeed right-wing violence. We have a report uh, from the Domestic Intelligence Agency saying that Almost six times as many far-right motivated cases of violence happen in the former East German states as in the former West German states. What's behind that? Well, uh, it's a good question, Terry, and a lot of people have been searching for answers to that. Sadly, we see, uh, you know, xenophobic and racist violence in a lot of places, but why does it persist so prominently uh, in Eastern Germany? And there are some standard answers, of course. There hasn't been... Uh, a lot of investment or perhaps enough investment you know western big western german companies have not transferred production uh, to the east in general uh, except in a few places like berlin or interestingly enough in in saxony uh, but uh, the, the general picture is very thin economically uh, there are some uh, promising East German businesses. A lot of East German technology businesses are leaders in their field, world leaders indeed. But it takes time for the effects of that, of course, to, to filter through. So what's happened, a lot of young people have moved away to seek opportunities elsewhere, leaving behind uh, older people, less educated people. Many of those uh, you know, feel like they've been left behind by the developments of the last 26 years. Now, that could be a reason why... Some of them are drawn to populist parties with, uh, you know, simple messages blaming their problems on foreigners and other people. Of course, what it doesn't really explain is why there's this violence uh, that we've seen so often, uh, particularly when you think that there are very few uh, foreigners, uh, compared with the average in Germany, who are located in the eastern states. Well, given this need for economic development in, in the east, and take Saxony as an example, it, um, it's obvious that the anti-foreigner set sentiment, the, the attacks that we've seen recently, they, they tarnish the image. They further tarnish the image of this area, and that could arguably have economic consequences, not least for tourism. Well, it is having economic consequences. The, the government's uh, point woman uh, for the development of the eastern states, Iris Gleicher, she said in her report the other day that, you know, uh, the uh, economic development of the east is being endangered by these xenophobic attacks. And anecdotally, employers there in Dresden, for instance, report that they sometimes have trouble uh, attracting new employees to come and work there precisely because of these incidents. Of course... Uh, something like today's celebration uh, is intended as, an, as, a, as a sort of PR event also to, to, to polish that image again. OK, um, anti-foreigner sentiment aside, right-wing violence aside, uh, what is the state of the union between the former East and West Germany at this point? Have the differences largely disappeared after 26 years? Well, in many ways, uh, yes, they have. But, of course, there are different traditions, different legacies, uh, you know, two separate systems coexisting in parallel for 40 years. Uh, you know, even in 26 years of, of, of unity, you don't uh, put that to one side. And, of course, as you've mentioned, there are differences in, in pay and pensions. And every year we hear an announcement, you know, that these uh, valleys are nudging slightly closer together. But there is still that, that difference that niggles. Um, you also have higher unemployment in the eastern states, about 2.5% higher in the eastern states than in the west. So there are key economic differences between the two parts of Germany. 
Okay, 26 years uh, since reunification back in 1990. Uh, that's quite a while, particularly for younger Germans. Are, are Germans today aware of the transformation that took place in East Germany over this time, of just what was achieved? Are they conscious of, the, of that achievement? Well, I think, I think people are uh, conscious of that, and of course it's, it's rehearsed endlessly uh, in the media here, as you know. Um, but having said that, you get some interesting results when, you know, surveys and pollsters ask people these questions. A majority in the East say that they think that, uh, you know, the, the GDR, Communist East Germany, was generally positive. Of course, people in the West, a majority of them say they think it was generally negative. And you still get a, a slight majority of people in the East saying they quite like to have East Germany back again. Surprising, I think, that result. Simon, thank you so much, DW Simon Young.